Hi everyone. Kids and boxes don't mix. One of them is going to end up in the rubbish. But collectors of all asundry know the value of the original packaging and toy soldier collectors are no different. We should never forget that the original packaging has an associated cost relative to the purchase price. They weren't free and anyone involved in manufacturing knows that. You the buyer paid for that box. Its cost is included in the price of the set you just bought. Over several episodes, I've mentioned the value and importance of keeping the original maker's boxes in which our toy soldiers, tanks, artillery pieces, and aircraft, etc. are sold in. I've spoken about how these boxes help to preserve the items with individual foam spacing, tie downs, or packaging material. I've also commented on how we can use the boxes to identify the maker, what the items are, and their set numbers, and if they are limited production run, etc., and possibly gather enough information from them to ascertain the approximate date of manufacture. I believe it's important to say that all manufacturers put effort into the packaging with sturdy construction, inserts, graphic designs, embossing, or paper labels. Take a look at your box tops the next time, and who knows, maybe you have an old Britain's box with a Wistock label. I really didn't pay any attention to the boxes or packaging until a fellow collector threw this out as a suggestion for a future video. Shout out to you, RT. And then he asked me for images of my box tops. You see, he is trying to archive what passed before and what is out there now. So as I was forwarding the images, I thought, yeah, he's right. There's a story in the box tops. And given that I've kept most, if, if, if not all, my original containers, Maybe I can put something together. This episode is not intended to be an exhaustive list of every box I possess. That would make this video even more boring. But rather a sampling so that you can see the diversity in materials, shapes, colors, labeling, and artwork that drew your eye to make that purchase in the first place. So let's take a look at these boxes. By virtue of its long history, Britain's has, I think, the greatest variation of boxes. I have no idea how old some of mine are, and it's not the reason I kept them, but I'll try to arrange them in some order of time. I think what makes Britain's packaging distinctive is the history. You could even call it a history of 130 years of packaging. So often, I've read about or heard a collector relate about a time in their adolescence when the sight of the distinctive thin red boxes with with stock or other paper labels signaled a toy soldier set. Still, Britain's packaging has become diverse over time. From the original red thin to clamshell to a standard type of figure box, Britain seems to cover it all. King and Country packaging has also morphed over the last 40 odd years. Like Britain's, the packaging is diverse in recognition of the product lines and size of the item. You could argue that as King and Country became more successful, its packaging moved from the simplistic to more complicated in its graphics or artwork. Still, I am partial to the first of the few box top with its paper label and colored artwork. Again, no doubt this is not cheap to produce. The spirit of the empire, which I have spoken of in previous episodes, has the most unique boxes I possess. These are made from a soft wood, nailed or tacked together, originally filled with wooden shavings and later foam with a sticker on the top to identify the contents. But spirit went a bit further by burning or inking the bottom of boxes with more information and like other makers inserted information slips into the boxes. So in the end the boxes are what I believe to be ammunition or cartridge boxes circa 19th century. Is that cool or what? The remaining boxes are unique in their own way and I'll stop talking here and let you see them by themselves.
I've read somewhere that Nostalgia didn't box its sets, so I can't explain how this has happened. But perhaps collectors who are more familiar with that maker's business practices can explain or give us some insight. So maybe not what you expected from an episode, but I hope you got a chance to see other makers' boxes, perhaps even recognize some of your own, and were reminded of why you want to keep the boxes. Thank you again for watching this episode, and if you liked what you saw, please don't forget to hit the like or subscribe buttons. Until next time, keep collecting.